Hello, fabulous nieces and nephews. It's your favorite aunt again, Aunt Julene. Today's book is, is Incredible Ned by Bill Naynard and Frank Remkowitz. I'm not entirely sure how to say that second name, but I got this book from your Aunt Mandy, another one of your favorite aunts. I really like it because it um, it's a very silly story and silly stories are fun. And also it rhymes and often rhyming books have sort of a fun rhythm that we get into. So enjoy. Incredible Ned, you could see what he said. Everything that he spoke appeared over his head or right next to his chair or a few yards away. And his friends would all shout, we can see what you say. When Ned said gorilla, the kids all jumped back for they saw a gorilla and feared an attack. And when Ned said bananas, bananas were there on the stove, in the sink, in his hair, everywhere. If a word that Ned said was the name of a thing, then that thing might float by on the end of a string. He could say and or the and have nothing to fear. It was words like baboons that made baboons appear. It started when Ned was a child of one. His father came home and asked, what has Ned done? And his mother replied, well, it may sound absurd, but today was the day that I saw his first word. You saw his first word? You saw his first word? You saw his first word? Don't you really mean heard? Ned's problems began on his first day of school. Every time that he spoke, he felt more like a fool when the things that he said appeared over his head or on top of his desk or a few rows away. Then his classmates would shout, we can see what you say. When Ned said giraffe, you could see a giraffe, and its neck was so long, it made everyone laugh. When Ned said parade, one appeared by the wall and marched straight through the class and out into the hall. No wonder the children didn't get their books read. It was so much more fun just to watch what Ned said. Then his teacher complained, we're not getting work done. With young Ned in the class, school is much too much fun. I can't get him to stop. Every day it gets worse. I will have to get help. Ned must go see the nurse. Are you sick? Asked the nurse. Are you blowing your nose? Have you started to sneeze? Are there pains in your toes? Have you eaten too much? Have you had any spills? You might need some time off or you could need some pills. Some pills, said poor Ned, and the room quickly filled with some 4,003,200 pills. Pills that covered the desks and the chairs. What was worse, there were so many pills that they covered the nurse. I can't help, said the nurse, though I'm glad Ned stopped by. He's not sick. It's a trick. Let the band leader try. Maybe Ned's a musician, the band leader thought. He might sing. He might play. He just needs to be taught. When he asked Ned to name all the things in a band, all the things filled the class. There was no place to stand. I can't cure him, he said, and I think I know why. It's his words, not his notes. Let the French teacher try. Zoot, the French teacher said. Ned needs new things to say. Words like bonbon for candy and jour for play. But when Ned said bateau, that's the French word for boat, you could see a bateau. It was real. It could float. And when Ned said voiture, that's the French word for car, the class saw a voiture. This was going too far. Ned's poor teacher was now at the end of her rope. So far, no one had helped. But she had one last hope, for there was one last someone who wasn't the same. So she made one last call and the principal came. The principal? Wow, that made Ned feel real sad. When the principal comes, then you know things are bad. In your school, she's the law. In your school, she's the boss. And the last thing you want is for her to feel cross. Ned, the principal said, I will have to be stern for we want the class calm so the children can learn. And whenever you speak, the whole class comes apart. Since you can't seem to stop, what you didn't mean to start. I have made up a rule that should satisfy all. You'll say nothing at all or go stand in the hall. Say nothing at all or go stand in the hall? Ned must never say bat, never even say ball. Then that's it, Ned decided. I guess I won't speak. And he sat there in silence for almost a week. Till the art teacher came on her usual day and they told her why poor Ned had nothing to say. Oh my goodness, she said, let me stop those complaints. 
and she gave Ned some pencils and paper and paints. Then she watched what Ned did, and she liked what she saw when he picked up a pencil and started to draw. He drew fish, he drew birds, he drew flowers and trees, he drew lions and tigers and monkeys and bees. What is that? asked the teacher. A lion, said Ned, and nothing, but nothing showed over his head. What is that? asked the teacher. A tree, Ned replied, and nothing, but nothing appeared at his side. The art teacher smiled. She could understand Ned, and she knew why those things had shown over his head. Ned's an artist, she said. That's what Ned's all about. When your head's full of pictures, they have to come out. Now to show those great pictures that lived in his head, Ned didn't need to use words. He could draw them instead because painting and talking are equally real. They're just two different ways to show folks how you feel. And as long as Ned colored and painted and drew, he could speak just like me. He could talk just like you. And nothing, he said, appeared over his head or right next to his desk or a few yards away. And his classmates complained, we can't see what you say. But at times when young Ned is at home late at night, when he's opened his window and turned out the light, with his pens put away and his paints on the shelf, when he's sure he's alone, he'll say moose to himself. And a moose will appear at the foot of his bed, and he'll know that he still is incredible Ned. The End <laughs>